Hey everybody, my name is Pam. Welcome to my channel for goodness keepsakes and today is part three of a three-part tutorial for how to make this really cute autumn chevron newborn set. And today's video is going to be for these cute little booties. Now believe it or not, these little booties have this adorable little knit looking bow on them and it's not knit. Well, not technically. It's actually done with something called a Tunisian knit stitch. Now, if you hear Tunisian crochet and you get worried and go, I don't have a Tunisian crochet hook, don't worry, you don't need one. And in fact, if you just have a standard, it's stuck. I got it hooked to the yarn. If you just have a standard like crochet hook with no handle on it or anything, this will actually work just fine because it's pretty small. You don't need a whole lot of space, but you do need to be able to have a little more shaft room than what's typically allowed with a lot of these crochet hooks that have the ergonomic handle on them. So if you have a crochet hook like, you know, a boy brand or a Susan Bates or something that does not have that ergonomic handle, that will actually work. And I give you full instructions here, so try not to let it overwhelm you because really it's quite simple and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Even if you're not familiar with Tunisian crochet, you should be able to pull off this cute little bow. The pattern for the dress, for the bonnet, and the booties are all part of one pattern for sale in my Etsy shop and it is fondly called Autumn's Chevron Newborn Set. This makes a really great gift for like an expecting mom or you know a new for a new grandbaby, whatever. Let me show you now how to make these cute little booties now once again you're going to need an H hook. I'm going to use my Clover Amore hook, but when it comes to the bow I'm going to be using a kind of standard Susan Bates hook. It's the same size, a 5mm H hook, but for the main part of the shoe I'm going to be using this hook just because it's more comfortable. And then we have our two colors that we've been using for this whole pattern. So in this particular case one's going to be color A and one's going to be color B and whatever color you make color A is going to be basically the color of your bow and the sole and whatever the the tying string is. So I'll be using blue as my color A and brown as my color B. So to get started with um, the little peep toe shoe, which by the way, both shoes are the same pattern. So you need to make two of these. You're gonna make a slip knot. Now, if you wanna make this slip knot where you can tighten it with the tail, which actually I think I will do, it's kinda nice because sometimes you can end up with a gap in the shoe and it's nice to have a tail that you can kind of tighten it with so you don't have a gap. So we're going to start by doing a chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, seven, eight. And then in the second chain from the hook we're going to put two single crochets. So not in the first one but in the second chain Two single crochet. One, two. Next we're going to single crochet two times. So in the next two stitches put a single crochet. So there's one and here's two. Now in the next stitch we're going to put a half double crochet. So half double crochet into the next chain and then we're going to double crochet two times one in each of the next two uh, chains. So there's one double crochet and two double crochets and you should have one chain left. And into that one chain we're going to put seven double crochets. And what you're going to find is that it's going to start um, kind of creating a circle. It's going to start bringing your work around. So there's one, two, three, four, whoops, <clears throat> five, six, and seven. And you see, this is why it's good to have a, a tail that can tighten this hole because sometimes you can end up with quite a gap there. And so it's nice to have it so that the tail cinches the work because you can pull it tight and look, the gap is gone. And then when you're done, the booty you would secure that tail. And I'll show you how later. So continuing on, we're now going to be working along the back side of this chain. And it's going to basically be the same thing we did, but in reverse. So in the next two stitches or chains, we're going to put a double crochet. So double crochet two times. One. Two. Then we're going to half double crochet in the back of the next chain. 
Then we're going to single crochet two times. One, two, and then we're going to put two single crochet into that last chain, which is really the first one we worked into. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. When you're done this row, you should have 21 stitches going around. Now we're going to chain one and starting in the very first stitch because the chain one doesn't count as anything. So we're going to start working right into that stitch where we slip stitched. We're going to do two single crochet two times. So into this stitch here, two single crochet, and then into the next stitch, two single crochet. Next, we're going to single crochet six times, one in each of the next six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to do two single crochet six times. So two in each stitch is one and two and three and four and five and six whoopsies and there's the second one in the sixth now we're going to single crochet six times so one two three four five six and then we're going to do two single crochet two times now you might think but wait a minute isn't that stitch going into here and so that's technically part of that yep and you're going to work in there anyways so it's kind of going to be like four stitch the equivalent of four single crochets in that one stitch so put two single crochets in that stitch and then into this stitch here put two more single crochets now, this time though, when we join, we're going to be joining and switching to color B. So you're going to join to the top of your first single crochet, but rather than yarn over and slip through with the blue, sorry, you're going to snip that off, switch to color B, and draw up your loop with color B. But you're going to start row three by chain one, and then what we're going to do is a back loop single crochet 13 times so we're going to work in the back loops only and we're going to do this 13 times so one two three four oopsies split the yarn five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, and 13. Now's where it gets a little funny, and this is why making a video for this to me is really important. You're going to bring your yarn to the front of your work, and the reason is because we are going to do a slip stitch six times, but we're going to slip stitch from back to front. So we're not going to slip stitch like this, we're going to slip stitch like this. So insert your hook back to front in the next stitch. And this is why you need your yarn in the front and do a slip stitch. Go into the next stitch, back to front, do a slip stitch. And we're doing this six times. So here's the third one. What's important here is that you let the hook gauge your slip stitch size and you don't pull it too tight or it's going to pucker. You want your slip stitches to be properly gauged, which I'm struggling. <laughs> back to front, slip stitch, back to front. slip stitch one two three four five and then I just have to do one more so that I have six there's six now bring the yarn back to the other side um, what kind of helps is that you'll see the yarn comes on top of the stitch if you pull it all the way over it comes on top of the stitch you just worked and so this is the stitch we're going to work into next and we're going to continue with 13 more back loop single crochets so one two three, four, five, six motorcycles, <laughs> seven, 
eight. I'm grabbing the tail, whoops, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And we're going to join to our first single crochet, which is this stitch right here. Now, if you want, you can pause real quick and tie your color tails together where you did your color change. That's the end of row three, and you should have 32 stitches around, which is what you should have had at the end of the last row, and I don't know if I said that, sorry. Um, next row, we're going to chain one and skip one. Now, I say skip one, and you might think, well, does that mean that one or that one? We're going to skip that and work into here. So skip this one and work into the next stitch with a single crochet. And we're actually gonna do seven single crochets all together. So that was the first one. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Seven single, uh, single crochets. Then you're going to half double crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to half double crochet two together twice. So half double crochet two together looks like you're going to do a half double crochet. So you drop a loop in the first stitch as if to half double crochet, but then just go right into the next stitch and drop a loop and then yarn over and pull through all four loops. Let me show you again, cause we got to do two anyways. Drop a loop, just like you're gonna half double crochet, but then go right into the next stitch, drop a loop. Now you've got four on here and yarn over, pull through all. That's how you half double crochet two together. Then what we're going to do is chain three, one, two, three, and skip six stitches. Now, if this is if this is all aligned correctly, you see we worked into this stitch, and the next six stitches are the slip stitches. So skip one, two, three, four, five, six, all of these that we slip stitched and go into this seventh here with half double crochet two together. And we're doing that twice. So starting in this stitch, which you can actually look and see, there's the where we drew the yarn back to the other side, and there's the first single crochet that we did, or back loop single crochet. We're going into that stitch there. We're going to half double crochet two together twice. So there's the first one. Here's the second one. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going to uh, single crochet seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After you've single crocheted seven, we're going to single crochet two together. So you'll see there's two here. Um, one way you can join them together kind of seamlessly is to just go into the front loop of the first one and the front loop of the second one and work like a regular single crochet. That's one way to do it. And then join to your first single crochet. This is what you should have so far. So at the end of row four, you should have 24 stitches. So we're gonna start row five now and we're gonna start with a chain one and again, we're going to skip one. So we're going to skip the very first stitch that we slip stitched into and start in this stitch here. We're going to single crochet six times this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. After we crochet, single crochet six times, we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch. And then we are going to do a double crochet two together two times. So double crochet these two stitches together. There's one. And then double crochet two together this chain or stitch <laughs> with this one. Now into the next stitch, which is a chain stitch, you're going to just do a regular double crochet. And now we're going to double crochet two together again. So it'll be this space, let me get both of those loops, and this stitch, double crochet those two together. There's one, and then double crochet these two together. There's two. Into the next stitch, do a half double crochet. 
Then we're going to single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll see that there is one stitch left in the back. Skip this last stitch here and join to your first single crochet. At the end of row five, you should have 19 stitches. We're now gonna do row six. So start with a chain one, single crochet six times. It doesn't say to skip a stitch. So make sure you work into that first stitch. Single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it says to slip stitch six times. Um, try to do this uh, not super tight. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to single crochet six times. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and you'll see there's one stitch left and then the stitch that we already worked into. We're going to skip this stitch and join to the top of our single crochet. chain one and turn so that the inside of the boot is facing you. And this is where it can be a little bit confusing, but it's really not that complex. You're going to basically do a foundation double crochet into the back of this booty. So what we're gonna do is yarn over, insert our hook two stitches back. So here's the first stitch, here's the second stitch. So we'll go into two stitches back and draw up a loop and then complete a foundation double crochet. So that's done by yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a foundation double crochet. And we're going to foundation double crochet five more times. So going into this space here, we're going under that V and we're going to do another foundation double crochet. So you yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to do it again. Now going into this space right there. So yarn over, insert your hook here Draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through one. That's kind of like the chain one. And then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's the second of the five we need to add. So here's the third. Here's the fourth. And here's the fifth. So when you're done, you'll have six foundation double crochets total and what you'll do is cut leaving yourself a small uh, small tail for sewing so like six to eight inches and what you'll do is you'll bring this down like this and sew it using this tail just kind of go back and forth to form a loop so I'm gonna get a, a needle and thread this onto my needle fold this down and I'll just kind of head straight to the back on the bottom and I'll just keep going back and forth, going through here and through here. And then through here. And then through here and maybe catch a little bit of that. And then back again, just for added security. And back again and this time I'm going to tie a knot so there's the little loop that we'll be putting the string through there's the little shoe now we're going to add a bow to it but not before I fish in these tails because they're driving me nuts so to 
finish this tail off, what you can do is without having to do a whole bunch of threading in and then worrying about it coming undone because the tail is what loosens the knot, especially since this is a little shoe, what you'll do is kind of, I don't know, pick a spot, go on, whoops. <laughs> Push it all the way down, grab your yarn, split it in half. Pull the thread up, like the needle up, and pull half of that thread out. Kind of encourage this to unwrap if you want. Take half this, this yarn and just fish it through a few stitches. And then that way you can tie a really small, non-invasive knot right there, and that will secure your tail. And at this point, if you want, you can actually just take these tails and fish them in if you want. Like so find some stitches and just kind of tuck them in or you could just trim them really short either way it, it really doesn't matter because that's not coming undone because there's a solid knot holding that together and these I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna be lazy and just trim that now I'm gonna show you how to make the bow so if you've never done Tunisian crochet before this is a really good introduction and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to use a standard um, H hook without any kind of grip so that we have more of the length to work with Pick whatever color you're using. In this case, it's gonna, I'm going to do color A for the bow, so that's going to be the blue. This starts the same generally. You're going to have a standard slip knot, I'm going to do it this way, and chain nine. If you've never done Tunisian crochet before, this is like a really fun, really small, simple introduction. So we're going to chain nine. I wasn't counting. What do I have? <laughs> Three, six, seven, eight nine we're going to chain nine and then what we're going to do is starting in the second and working our way to the end of the chains we're going to just draw up a loop in each space so just go into here draw up a loop go into the next chain draw up a loop the trick here is not to pull your loop super loose like that you want your loop to be kind of properly gauged to the hook and then just go into each of these chains and draw up a loop And when you get to the end, you should have the same number of loops on your hook as you have chains. So there's nine chains, there should be nine loops. So then what we're going to do is something called a return pass. So to do a return pass, you yarn over and pull through one loop only, and then you just yarn over and pull through two until you get back to having just one loop on the hook where you started. So yarn over and pull through one loop. And then we're just going to yarn over, pull through two till we get to the end. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 And yarn over, pull through hey, two. What? It is high. High. But I assume you want something. What do you want? Um, you didn't make me a slingshot yet. I didn't make you a slingshot yet? Yeah. Well, I'm, right now I'm working on a video tutorial for the little baby shoes. I'll have to make you one afterwards, okay? Okay. You're going to have to remind me, though, because I, I tend to forget. Okay. Go play and have fun. Now we're ready to do something called the Tunisian Knit Stitch, which is just referring to how you draw up your loop. So with normal Tunisian crochet, you don't start in the first loop, because this kind of counts as your first. So you always start in the second one. And you usually just go under this front vertical bar... And just draw up a loop but when you're doing something called a Tunisian knit stitch because you can see it's like a series of loops hugging what looks like a chain it's almost like it's it's really interesting actually what you're gonna do is go in between those and then to the back of the work so you'll see these gaps you're going under the front bar and then between these two to the back and you're just going to go through each of these and draw up a loop so under the front bar to the back draw up a loop under the front bar, to the back, draw up a loop. Under to the back, draw up a loop. Under to the back, draw up a loop. Under to the back, draw up a loop. And you're going to do that in each of these till you get to the very end. And when you get to the very end, you'll see here, this very end here almost looks like a, a chain. Like, <laughs> you're just going to draw up a loop in there too you want to make sure when you get to the end if you're not sure like did i get them all you should again have one three six nine loops on your hook because you started with nine chains and now you're going to do a simple return pass so the return pass again yarn over pull through just one 
but then you're just going to yarn over and pull through two until you get back to where you started so yarn over pull through two 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 oops yarn over pull through two 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 until you're back to one loop on the hook you can't yarn over and pull through two because there's only one loop and now you've done your first row of tunisian knit stitch so we're going to do that again once again this loop kind of goes with this first stitch here so you don't need to go into this first one you start in the second one and you go under to the back draw up under to the back draw up under to the back draw up and what you'll see is that what this stitch does is it takes that loop that's going like this and it it forces the loop from going like this to like this and that's what gives it that knit look appearance so under to the back under to the back draw up a loop under to the back drop a loop under to the back drop a loop and then you've got this end here that we're just going to go under and drop a loop and again three six nine loops on our hook again so yarn over pull through just one yarn over pull through two until you get to the end this is our second row of tunisian knit stitch so after you finish your return pass, you have completed two rows of Tunisian knit stitch. Look at that. So we are doing collectively three rows. So we're going to do this one more time. So not into this first, but into the second loop here. Do Tunisian knit stitch. Go under to the back. Not under the whole thing. Because if you go underneath the whole thing, you're just going through that gap. And we don't want to do that. We want to go just under this vertical bar and then to the back in between these two bars. Like that under to the back kind of like at a diagonal angle and just draw up a loop in each of those spaces till you get to the end and then just kind of go underneath those there like so and again three six nine loops on the hook we're going to do a return pass so yarn over pull through one and then yarn over pull through two till you get back to where you started whoopsies Now, to finish this bow, because that's literally all there is to it, we're actually going to just work single crochets to the end. But we're going to insert our hook as if to Tunisian knit stitch. So, we're going to go right into here, like we're going to draw up a loop for our Tunisian knit stitch. But then rather just going and drawing up more loops, we're actually going to complete a single crochet. So, go in as if to Tunisian knit and finish a single crochet. Go in as if to make a Tunisian knit stitch, but then just yarn over, pull through two. Go in, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Go in as if to make a Tunisian knit stitch, and then yarn over, pull through two. And we're just doing that until we get to the end. You're gonna end up doing this eight times, you'll find. See? Then we're just going to cut and tie and fish in our ends. Now, the thing about Tunisian knit is that you end up with this is what the back looks like. And what the whole thing wants to do is roll up on itself like that. It actually kind of works to our advantage because what we're going to do is make the bow so that the knit is on the front. And by cinching it in the middle, it makes the bow want to kind of almost look voluminous. And so it just looks puffy and cute. At least that's my opinion. So what I'm going to do is fish in these tails, actually. Trim it short. And then what we're going to do is cut ourselves a length of yarn about 10 inches long. Doesn't have to be super long, about 10 inches. And we're going to put it onto a needle. Look at the back side of the bow. We're going to push the center down so that we can bring the middle together. And we're just going to thread the needle right through those two stitches right there in the middle. Just like that. So the, the thread's not on the front side, it's all on the back. Put it so it's centered in there. And I'm going to do a knot. And then I'm going to do another to secure it. And look at that, there's our bow. What I like to do is this double crochet. There's the double crochet two together here and the double crochet two together here. And this is that double crochet right there. Right on either side of that post is where I like to pull these tails in on either side. So just fish that side and that side. And then grab the other one and put that here. And that's where your bow is going to sit. And we're going to kind of just tack it down. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look and see where it lays, which is about right there. And I'm going to 
insert my hook and draw up the tail that's on this side, which is hard to see. It's really hard to show you, but the tail on that side, I'm going to draw it up here. And I'm going to bring it up through the middle of the bow. And now I'm going to insert my hook next to it here and next to the stitch here and pull this down through all of that. And I'm not going to tie anything yet because I just want to make sure it looks like it's laying right before I really secure that in. So now we're going to do the same with the other side. It's hard to see, I apologize. But here's the other tail coming into the center for this side. I'm going to see where that lays, which is about right here. And I'm going to draw up the blue yarn here. And then I'm going to come through close to the end on the bow here and draw it up through. And then I'm going to come down next to it. And if I'm happy with how that generally looks, which I think I am, I'm going to just tie these two strings together, but not so tight that I make it cinch up. And in fact, what I think I'm going to do is bring this yarn up through here and back down so they meet a little closer in the middle. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And same over here. I'm going to just go up into the top here, draw up a loop, and then I'm going to just tie these two tails together. And then I'm just going to trim those short. So now there's only one thing left to do, and that is to make the string that goes through here that you can tie around the baby's ankle loosely, not too tight. <laughs> And for this, I'll just keep using the same hook because I already have it. And I'm going to just chain 80 and the same color that I made the bow with. And then I'm going to cut a bit of a tail, pull it through, and then we can just fish that through, like so. I'm going to probably keep these tails somewhat even. Um, one thing you can do that's kind of cute is put like a little pom-pom on the end of these. I'm not going to do that, but it is really kind of cute when you do that. And you can fray the ends of these if you want, kind of like we did with the um, bonnet tails. And you can just do that by shoving your... Um, needle in there and separating all the little strands and everything and and that way when it's on baby's foot you can just tie it gently around baby's leg and ta-da there's the little booty so then you just got to make this again what do you guys think and the other reason the reason main reason why i do the slip stitch from back to front is so that this little rim ends up on the top instead of on the bottom and so instead of having this on the top you have this on the top, which I think looks cuter in my opinion. So now we just have to do this all over again. And you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it together. Why not? Because maybe you watch that and you're like, gee, I wish she would do that again. Well, guess what? I'll do it again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chain eight to start. In the second chain from the hook, two single crochets. <laughs> I hope this isn't enough. I mean, you can obviously stop the video anytime you want. Like, you don't have to watch all this again. In the next two chains, we're going to single crochet. So, one, two. In the next chain, we're going to half double crochet. In the next two, two chains, we're going to double crochet. One, two. 
And then in this last chain here, we're going to put seven double crochets all in that one chain. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then what we're going to do is double crochet in the next two on the back side. So one, two, half double crochet in the next, whoop, single crochet two times, one, get in there, two, and then we're going to into this last, um, chain here, which is the first one we worked into, really, we're going to put two single crochets into that one chain and slip stitch to the top of our first single crochet to join. You should have 21 stitches going around. So for row two, chain one, and into that same, starting in that same stitch you slip stitched into, we're going to do two single crochets twice. So there's the first two into that stitch and the next two into the next stitch. Then we're going to single crochet um, six times. So one, two, whoops, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to do two single crochets six times. So one, two is one, one, two is two, one, two is three, one, two is four, one, two is five and then the last one and two makes six then we're going to single crochet six times one two three four five six and then we're going to do two single crochets twice so two into this stitch and then two into that very first stitch where we started at and join to the top of your first However, when you go to join, slip stitch with like to join with your new color. So we're going to switch to brown. So switch to brown. Chain one. And now we're going to do 13 back loop single crochets starting in the very first one. So into this very first stitch here where you joined. One, two, Whoops, I lost some of my loop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Then we're going to bring the yarn to the front so we can do back to front slip stitches. And we're going to do that six times. So there's one, two, three, four. Five. Whoops, it's the same one. <laughs> Six. Bring the yarn back around to the front. Going into the next stitch, we're going to start doing 13 more back loop single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops, I split it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then join to your first single crochet, which is this one here. And then again, I like to tie my tails. What I'm actually going to do is just tie them and trim them now so I don't keep getting tangled up in them like I was last time. So tie a simple knot. Trim. I'm ready to continue. So then 
After this row, you should have 32 stitches, which is what you should have had when you finished row two as well. So chain one, skip the first stitch. So the one you slipped into, skip that. And we're going to do seven single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to do a half double crochet. Then we're going to half double crochet two together twice. So one. two and we're going to chain three one two three and skip the six slip stitches so basically just go over here to where your line is and look at the single crochet right next to it right there that's where you're going to start your half double crochet two together for the next side and then half double crochet two together one more time and then half double crochet into the next stitch single crochet seven times one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're going to single crochet two together and join to the first single crochet you made for this row. Uh, after this row, after row four, you should have 24 stitches going around. So now for row five, chain one, again, skip the first stitch and starting in the next one, you're going to single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Whoops. Double crochet two together twice. So double crochet one and two together once and double crochet this one and this one Ooh. there we go now we're going to double crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to double crochet two together twice so there's one and two Again, make sure that you don't, when you're working your next stitch or, you know, when you're working through here, you don't accidentally go back into a stitch you've already worked because that can be really confusing. And half double crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to skip that stitch and just straight up join. So now after this row, you should have 19 stitches. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet six times starting in that first stitch. So going into that very first stitch, we joined two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to slip stitch six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to single crochet six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to skip that last stitch and just join to the first one we made, which means we'll have one less stitch, which means after this row you should have 18 stitches going around. What I'm going to do is slip stitch over one, chain one, turn, and then count back two stitches right into here. Um, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook as if we're going to double crochet into this space. We're gonna draw up a loop. We're gonna yarn over, pull through one. That's kind of like doing a chain one at the bottom of a double crochet. And then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to complete the foundation double crochet. So then we just do five more foundation double crochets. So insert your hook here into that space there. See how there's like a slight V right there? You're going to go there. Should look like that. Drop a loop. 
So you've yarned over, insert your hook there, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's one more foundation, double crochet. We're going to do this four more times so that we have six all together. Drop a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So yarn over, insert your hook into the bottom of the last one you just did. Drop a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You'll see here we have one, two, three, four, five. We need to do one more because we need six. So yarn over, insert your hook, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Cut leaving yourself a long enough tail to sew the ends together. Get a needle, thread it on, fold it in half. You can go this way if you want. I tend to go in because I feel like it looks a little bit better. And just insert your needle straight back in the corresponding place and then just kind of go back and forth to secure it. Um, when you have it folded down in front you can make sure that when you're coming back through that you actually grab it and that you're actually sewing through it. A little easier to tell. So I'm going to come up here and grab just that little bit right there. And then I'm going to go back the way I came, just for a little extra added stability and structure and other words that make me sound like I know what on earth I'm doing. And to the back. And then I'm just going to come back up here and tie a knot. And then I'm just going to thread this tail in through here and snip it off. The only other thing I want to do is make sure I anchor that starting tail down. So notice I've worked the tail back quite a ways. If I pull it really tight, it's going to cinch the shoe. So be careful you don't do that if you work over your tail. Split it. Pull it up. So I can pull half of it out. I'm going to let it untwist a little bit. And then just thread this right on the other side of one of these stitches. And then I don't want to pull this initial knot tight because I don't want to make it pucker. So I'm just going to make this one just tight enough without pulling it super tight. And then I'm going to make the next one kind of tight. And that'll keep it from getting all puckered up and stuff. Now let's be different and do the string next. See how that's a little more centered in the shoe? We're just going to chain 80. <laughs> Sheesh, <laughs> getting excited here. There we go. Let me just insert that in there. Pull it through. Ta-da. I'm not going to tie it yet, though. So let's do our bow again. I'll show you how to do that again. Because that's, if you've never Tunisian crocheted before, it can be really intimidating. But it's really not as bad as you think. So do a slip knot. Use a standard hook where you have a little more space to work with so you're not squished. Chain nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
draw up a loop in each of your stitches starting in the second chain from the hook because obviously this loop already goes into this chain right so you want to start in the second chain from your hook draw up a loop one two three four five six seven eight so you do it eight times and when you do it if you've done it eight times and you count it correctly you'll have three six nine loops on your hook and you're going to do a return pass that's when you yarn over pull through one and then there's yarn over and pull through two until you get back to where you started so yarn over pull through two 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 now you're ready to do the Tunisian knit stitch, which is three rows of that, rows two to four. So for row two, you're going to go in under this vertical bar and then to the back. Can you ask Amelia to please get you a drink? Yeah. Um, so don't go into this first one because this loop already goes to that first loop. So you start in the second one here. Do you live in the um, area door? All right, hold on. So draw up a loop in each of those spaces until you get to the end, and then draw up a loop on the end there, and you should have, again, nine loops on your hook. Then yarn over, pull through just one to start your return pass, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way till you get back to where you started. I've already the way. Now, if you want to know why you don't chain one when you get to the end over here, yes, you can throw those strings away. You don't chain one when you get to the end of a row. Don't ask me why, because I don't understand Tunisian crochet, honestly. I just know how to do it. <laughs> I don't understand the physics and stuff. <laughs> okay, so again, that was our first row of Tunisian knit stitch. Let me get my son outside so I can do the second row. Okay. So, starting the second row... So, starting the second row of Tunisian knit stitch, you're just going to repeat what you just did. You're going to go starting in not the first loop, but the second loop. You're going to go under that vertical bar and to the back and draw up a loop. And you're going to do that two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then for this, you're just going underneath those two. So that's like your eighth one. And then do a return pass. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two until you get back to the beginning. That's your second row of Tunisian knit stitch. So we're going to do that one more time. Under the vertical bar to the back, starting in the second one, under the vertical bar to the back. And you can literally see, as you do it, that it's literally twisting that vertical, that loop, so that it's front-facing. That's what you want it to do. That's what makes it a Tunisian knit stitch. So yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and just keep doing that until you get back to the beginning. And now we've got one more row to do, and it's just a row of single crochet going across, starting in the second one. The only difference is that you're, the way you insert your hook matters. You just insert it as if you're going to Tunisia knit. So you insert your hook under the vertical bar into the back, Draw up a loop and then just complete a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then go into this space for your last one here, eight. And then we're just going to cut and weave in the ends. For this one, I like to go right under these um, single crochets because it's quite easy. Straighten it. Sounds like my baby might be waking up from her nap. And then this one, I like to go up and down. So this one, I just like to go in here and just through the backs here. It's pretty thick, really. It makes a pretty thick um, fabric. And I actually really, really, really like the Tunisian knit stitch for rags. It makes really nice rags, I think. Sounds like my toddler's getting mad. So again, cut yourself a 10-inch strand in the same color as your bow. 
Thread your needle with all but one tiny little string. What on earth? Get in there. <laughs> okay. And then flip your bow over to the wrong side. Push it so that the it cups up like that. And then just poke the needle through like so. And was that necessary? Could I have used my crochet hook for that? Yes. But I didn't. And, um, tie a knot. And secure your knot. Get your booty. And again, look for the area of the booty where you can see there's the double crochet two together. There's the double crochet. There's the double crochet two together. Anyways, so what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to actually use my needle. And what I'm going to do is lay this down flat. I don't want to pull it over. I want to make sure that this is laying where it wants to lay. And then just let it naturally kind of fall over to wherever it wants. And then just come up through all the fabric on one part down through all the fabric in another without losing my tail. And then come up here so I can bring my yarn back towards the middle again, come back down through everything. Yeah, this is a lot easier. Don't use don't don't use your crochet hook if you have a tapestry needle. <laughs> now we're going to do the other one. Thread the other half of the string. And we're going to let this lay naturally on its side and just bring the yarn all the way over here and poke it up through all the layers. We're going to make sure that we don't accidentally um, pucker it by pulling it too tight, though. Come back down. Come back up somewhere around yonder. That works. Go back down again. And then we're going to tie... These tails together not too tight initially because we don't want to cause it to again pucker the second one we can pull really snug and then just trim those tails short or fish them in if you really want to I'm not that worried about it and just um, gently tie it around their leg without cutting off circulation to their leg that would be really bad so don't ever tie this too tight like that Except not ugly. What on earth? Why did that turn out so ugly? So then their cute little chubby leg will be in there. And their little cute chubby foot in there. And so adorable. There we go. Ta-da! So that's all there is to it. Aren't they cute? Now, if you wanted, you could actually opt out of doing this little tab on the back. And just, and, and the string as well, and just have this cute little peep toe booty without all of that. But I like the little tie around the little chonky legs and stuff. It's super cute. And if you wanted it to tie around a little bit more, you can make the chain as long as you need. I would not do any less than 80 chains because 80 chains will make it just big enough for you to tie one simple little bow around their cute little legs. So the, vi the link to the video tutorial for the dress and bonnet too are in the description box below as well as the pattern. The one pattern listing includes everything. It includes the booties, the bonnet, and the dress. So <clears throat> it's not separate listings for that. It's all in one listing, but the videos are broken down because it's a little bit of a lengthier project, but it shouldn't take you too long. Honestly, you could crank this out in a weekend. So if you found this tutorial really helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. I work really hard to try to help you guys just because it's a pure joy for me to do. And I appreciate your support so much. Truly, it means a lot to me because I'm just blown away by you guys. <laughs> the amount of support I have. I can really do nothing but just say thank you, God, because that's got to be you because that's not me. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and have a blessed day.